All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Bill Woodage, who is just actually up the road in Irvine, California. And I'm here as usual in San Diego. How are you doing, Bill? Really well. And it's uh, nice to make your virtual acquaintance. Yeah, absolutely. So Bill has just published his uh, second book earlier this year with McGraw-Hill, published my first book, Great Publishers. Uh, and the book is called Fail More. And that's what we wanted to talk about today. So the book is called Fail More, Embrace, Learn and, and Adapt to Failure as a Way to Success. So um, I'd like to start off, Bill, what made you write a book about failure? Well, you know, you think about success, and I think we get caught up in success, and we, we're thinking about, you know, how we move forward in life. And my first book was always forward. It was the name of the book. And it was about a success journey. And, and I started thinking about it, and I thought, you know, before success, what's paramount? What's paramount before any kind of achievement? Before you raise the bar to the next level, what is there? Failure. Now, what do we do with failure? Do we ignore it? Do we run from it? Do we cower in the corners, the shadows, and ignore its existence, or do we do we learn from it? So I wanted to write a book, and McGraw Hill, as you know, because you, you're, it's a high bar to get with McGraw Hill. Sure. Congratulations on that as well. Uh, they wanted a how-to book, so I couldn't come out and say, "Hey, this is what you do. Just come out and just do it." You know, do the Nike swoosh mm -hmm. and make things happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wanted a how-to book, so I thought, and I did a reverse engineering on what it takes for for people who are very successful. What is it they did? What can I give the audience? What can I give the reader that they can learn from their failures so they don't fear it? They they might not embrace it, but they can damn sure learn from it. And that's why I wrote it. Yeah, and it's funny you said that because uh, there's, there's somebody I know, a friend of his who was highly, highly successful uh, business person. He had two things hanging on his wall. One was his degree from Harvard Business School, and the other was his first uh, bankruptcy. <laughs> from a failed business, and he always claimed that it was actually not the Harvard, not the degree from Harvard, but the other one that taught him the most. Yes, and, and I, I'm a, I espouse and I believe that. You know, it's like Churchill, who's famed to have said that that you know success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. You know, yeah, absolutely. Along the way, you know, you learn you learn more from your failure if you're open to learning. It's the other side of that coin that's success. It's the it is the other mm -hmm. side. You don't have one without the other. So you say uh, in one of your chapters, the greats have learned the art of failing more. So that might be sound a little counterintuitive to people listening, right? Saying, ooh, it's fail more, but surely I want to fail less. Well, what the greats have done is to keep raising that bar. And that bar is that place that we call uh, the place of the unknown. And mm. for us, if we don't know, we go into that, that thing that, that all humans hate. They, they, we have an aversion to things that are change and aversion yeah. to that will cause us loss. So we might be doing good enough, but to do better, to push that bar up to something that's unknown, something that where we're uncertain comes with risk. Oh, well, wait a minute now, that's gonna dent our ego. We don't wanna put ourselves out there at risk and dent our ego so we don't try those things that would make us fail. And the greats have learned, and Elon Musk I think is one of them, who said, I don't care if I fail 100% of the time. I've given something for people who are following me so they can at least better and improve from there. It's a great line on failure. Yeah, no, I agree. And it's funny because it's not just the fear of failure. I think it's sometimes it's the fear of success some people have because they they want to do something and they start to go towards it. And then they go, again, to your point about change, they go, oh, but if I'm successful, then maybe I'll have to move. Maybe this will change that. Which, and they suddenly, they talk themselves out of it. And it's not through fear of failure. It's fear, fear of actually succeeding and it working out. Spot on. That, that toxic self-talk is the biggest barrier, the biggest limit to success. Mm -hmm. And you know, I always say it's the serious student of success that treats failure as the indispensable teacher. You know, I, I just believe it goes hand in hand. And I've learned to accept and to embrace, and I've learned to move through that fear of success mm -hmm. to be able to become a success. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And you have a th you have a chapter here about recognizing fear. So, uh, is it, I mean, most people would say, "Well, I, I know when I'm afraid of things," but I guess the point is, you often don't. No, I want you to think about this. Think mm -hmm. about fear as something that's very important for us to sustain the species. We we need to have our fear. It's an ally, sure. important ally. But mm -hmm. there's a difference between fear and danger. 
You see, fear is something that that can be you know, accompanied by a danger from an animal, from an insect, from another human, or it can be that illusion, the imagination, that florid landscape that plays the worst case forward and makes us stop in our tracks. So learn to distinguish between fear and danger, and then learn where fear comes from. It's a protective measure. It's part of our instinct. It's part of our instinct. And then learn how to move through fear by summoning that rational CEO brain that's the prefrontal cortex that gets us to start thinking in logical terms. Because a lot of fear is emotion, and we don't think in emotion. We just want to survive. We want to run from the saber toothed tiger. Well, there isn't one in the, in the conference room. You know? <laughs> yeah, and it's funny you say about distinguishing between the two of them, because what there's, a, there's an acronym, isn't there? There's false evidence appearing real. Mm-hmm. Right, which is an acronym for fear, and we often do. We often, uh, we often uh, imagine, as you say, imagine things. Imagine there's somehow there's a saber toothed tiger when we know it's not really there, but we somehow convince ourselves through false evidence. It's those, it's that vestige of DNA that's our survival mechanism. And you know, if we don't band together in groups of safety, we're going to be subject to perish. Uh, uh, you know, the saber tooth tiger, the warring tribe. So we want to stay in our little box of comfort, our little bubble of comfort, and we don't want to move beyond it. But man, that's where life is. That's where the enjoyment of life is. We've got to be able to move through that to actually enjoy that type of lifestyle that we can only dream about if we don't. Yeah, and 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 you have another chapter about breaking through obstacles that limit success. And, and I always like this thing because uh, I read recently, I, I saw this interview recently with Chuck Norris, right? Yeah. And and he uh, he has a he has a charity that helps disadvantaged kids and all of that. And so when whenever the kids he's helping, when they want to give up, he always says to them, he goes, what what would what would uh, happen if you gave up at this obstacle now and it turned out that this was the last obstacle before your success? How would you feel later on if I told you that? Yeah. Uh, and of course they go, well, I'd feel terrible. They say, so go on. So I always like the idea about you know always always trying to overcome the obstacle because it could well be that last obstacle before you break through. So tell me, talk a little bit about breaking obstacles. Well, what you just said, and I think a segue to what you just said, which was, well, I, I really appreciate what you, what, how you phrased that, is I hitch, I hitch on to regret. And I think it and I play it forward and I say, if I don't do this, as I see my life now, will I be at a position maybe in life where I can't do this? Will I have regret? That is something that propels me forward as much as any kind of thing that I can envision for my future. I don't want to have that kind of regret. So I don't want to be in that place. I want to take those actions now that, well, you know, I want to leave my best thing on the field. It doesn't mean that you you butt your head against the wall so much that maybe you're you're bloody and you're you're not getting anywhere. You got to have enough self awareness to know that you're in the right place, doing the right thing. So you got to be responsible with this whole thing about failure, and you got to be you got to take risks that are intelligent and you have to weigh your risks against worst case. You can't just dive out there and go, Hey, well, more man. It's, it's not a, li- it's not a license to be irresponsible with your behavior. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And I think it's, and I think it's always, it's, it's very interesting that when people say like, Oh yeah, do you regret you know, taking this job or going here? And I always go, no, I don't. Uh, they may not have, it may not have worked out exactly as I planned, but it was part of my journey to where I am today. And to your point, if I had not taken that step, then who knows? I would maybe have been on a completely different path, maybe not even not as good a path. But to your point, is it's better to look back and say, yeah, yeah, at the time probably wasn't the smartest move I ever made. However, the move I made after that to make up for that not so smart move turned out to be a great move. <laughs> you have the awareness and that retrospective ability to say, I've done this stuff or similar stuff before. And mm-hmm. I think about this because I came out of the backwoods of Western Pennsylvania. If I wouldn't have taken that first step from a town of 3,800 people when others were telling me, don't do this, they're going to annihilate you out there. Mm-hmm. My entire world changed from taking that very first step. And I think that's the thing the listeners, the viewers need to do is think take the first step. And then what do I need to do? What have I learned from that first step to help me make the next step? And the world opened up for me. 
there. Yeah. And I, and I love, I just want to underline that point you just made about taking the first step, because again, I think as human beings, and we're talking about fear of failure or fear of success, whatever, is that we suddenly start to plan so far ahead. We're like, well, if I take this, step, well, I need to do this. Then. And you just go, no, 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 no. You need to put one foot in front of the other. Take the first, mm-hmm. take your next best step yeah. and then figure out what comes next. But don't, don't think so far ahead that you paralyze yourself. You know what the Ethiopian proverb is, right? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Yeah, exactly. Most of us look at the entirety of the, of the endeavor, <laughs> yeah. and we then shrink up and say, oh, I just can't do that. Right, you can't. You can't swallow yeah. all the way. You've got to take the small <laughs> steps, and that, that's one of the keys to working through failure. So um, you also say about becoming a master of failure. So how do you master the art of failure? <laughs> Failure as many times, fail as many times as I have, and they'll give you a master's degree. In it. So, you know, I, I, I think it's this. I think it's that you learn that to anticipate certain things so you don't have to fail. And being a master of failure, you, you can see based on past experience, okay, if the past is prologue, what, about, what could I have done different maybe? And what could I do now to avoid that misstep? And if it does occur... Then you learn to pivot from it. You learn what to do from there because you've been through it before. You know it's instinct now overwhelming you. You know to come up and write down what's really happening and how to make a dispassionate approach, a rational approach to moving forward. That's when you start to master failure. You're never going to embrace it. I think it's antithetical to human nature, but I think you can really become an ally with it, knowing that that probably means that's what you have to do when you start to fear failure. Yeah, and and I like again the, just to underline that point again about the you said about the uh, retrospection and looking back and learning from all the things that happened and making sure that you've taken the lessons for them. And when you're confronted with the situation today, as you say, take the emotion out of it for a moment and look back and say, okay. So I've been confronted with this before or something similar, and this is how I dealt with it, or may, and maybe I need to deal with it differently this time, or whatever yeah. the situation is. You know, and you bring me to a point, you bring me back to my kitchen table in Western PA. You want to know why I didn't get into an Ivy League law school? Why is that? I wasn't, I wasn't smart enough. But, but beyond, beyond that, there it is. No, they asked me, they said, this is part of the thesis, uh, right about John Dunn, who said, no man is an island. Yeah. Like, well, what do you mean by that? We, what I mean by that in fear is you have allies. You have people that are achieving. You need allies in life. No person is going to succeed on their own. We need each other. So you need to be with those people who are pushing that envelope, raising that bar, doing those things, getting published in places like you got published. It's possible. How did you do it? Just deconstruct be a reductionist, talk to them, and we can all go through this thing together because no one's going to go, go through it alone. Yeah, no, I, I, again, I, I totally agree. And I think then what you have to also realize is then that there's, that there's a certain duty uh, on you then is to, is to help other people along the way as well, right? Especially because, yes, nothing, you know, we can always say, uh, I, you know, it's level when people say they're a self-made person, right? Because that's not a hundred percent true ever. Yeah. I mean, you may have, you may be the one who pushed through, but a lot of people helped you. Uh, I, I've never, I've never found it sounds great, but I've never found someone who's a self-made person, never. And I think what you're talking about is an obligation, and I think it's a noble obligation to undertake to serve others. And I think by serving others, by sharing things, really sharing things and becoming mm-hmm. vulnerable in, in what you're sharing about your real life instead of some, you know, Instagram or some Facebook thing. It's just <laughs> who I want to be in a meme, you know? No, no, the real you, I think it helps people. Yeah. And I, and I think that absolutely. And I think people are craving that authenticity today because as you say, um, we can create these, uh, how should we say, maybe sanitized versions of our lives through snapshots in time with social media, but really, really actually doing something, being authentic and being that person who, yeah, uh, wherever you are in your life, you know, there's been good things and there's been not so great things and you've learned lessons and maybe you've learned some of them the hard way. And now you have the opportunity to, sh- to share with others and to say, yeah, well, you know, I screwed up too. You know, if the purpose of this exercise on this earth is what the Greeks would say is to pursue happiness, right? Mm. Create the conditions for that happiness by, by learning from failure. 
And I think that's the key. That's the big H that we're all looking for. And you can only live that if you're congruent and being authentic from your thought to your word to your deed. And that's going to be the authenticity, I think, that's going to compel people to follow you, compel people to believe in you as you are compelled to believe in them. And I, I live that way. And I believe it's all really in happiness and how I create those conditions and the sacrifice, the cost is, hey, I'm going to fail and I'll learn and I'll apply and then I will, I will succeed. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And I, I, I couldn't have wrapped this up better. That was beautiful. Um, so, Bill, before we go, uh, do you tell people a little bit more about you and what you do and how they can learn more about you? Well, I'm an, I'm an author, a professional speaker, and you can follow me at Bill Woodich. You can find me at BillWoodich.com, W-O-O-D-I-T-C-H, or at Bill Woodich. And I'm on all those platforms. You know, I think you probably find me at all the usual suspects. Yep. No, I'm going to Instagram, but I will tell you something. Uh, I do a lot of interviews and I'm fortunate to do that. And I have my own show. You were a fantastic, by the way, uh, host. You, you, great questions. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. And the book is Fail More, Embrace, Learn and Adapt to Failure as a Way to Success. And I would highly recommend. I think that I do think that fear of failure, fear of success, there's the book. It really does hold people back from filling their potential. And, you know, we only get one shot at this. And it's never too late to start, right? There you go. Thank you. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert insight interview really soon. Thank you. And thanks, Bill, again. Thanks, John.